Stephen Bunting muss ran gegen die Nummer 13 der Welt. Er steht jetzt bei 8 PDC-Titeln, hat vor zwei Wochen Nummer 8 eingesackt aus Stoke on Trent, Ian Diamond White. What a start we have had to the evening session here at the German Dart Grand Prix in Munich. Joe Cullen producing a couple of moments of real quality at the end of his match against Jordi Mayer-Wiese to win 6-5. A Shanghai checkout to force a last leg decider, which he won against the darts with a 164 checkout on the bullseye. Incredible stuff from Joe Cullen, who moves through to the final day of action, which is tomorrow on Easter Monday. And one of this pair will be joining him. Ian Diamond White, recently a winner on the PDC Pro Tour, and Stephen Bunting, a man who's won many titles. And this pair have had some decent clashes in the past two, one in particular on this European Tour stage. Dan Dawson, you'll have been there commentating on it. Yes, well, they, they've played 11 times between them, and Bunting shades it 7 4. But you go back to the European Darts Trophy, what, two and a half years ago? That was won by Bunting 6-3. They had a last leg decided the International Darts Open in Risa in a quarter final. And as I recall, that was a belter where they both averaged in excess of, what, 103 or something like that. I did speak to Stephen earlier on, and I said, I'm sure, before I'd had a look at the stats, and he said, like, Ian and, and I, the, we always seem to, to throw turn it on against each other. We always have good games. Hopefully we get one like that between these two, because they're both in form. Stephen Bunting was certainly in form yesterday. 101 average in 83. 6-0 whitewash as he got over the girdle hurdle. In round one, Christian Girdle on a European tour debut. Leaving the stage legless. 80. But not an awful lot he could have done about it. A few missed doubles here and there, but Bunting was brilliant. He was. I mean, the average finish at 101, but it was a lot higher than that for most of the match. Not that the match lasted very long. And Bunting says that the practice has been going very, very well. He says normally when he practices just at home in the garage, he's averaging sort of low to mid 90s, that sort of stuff. But he says I've been just chucking in the 100 averages regularly in my practice session. He's been a lot of practicing with uh, Dawson Merchell, the young Canadian who's moved over from Medicine Hat to set up in St. Helens. Yeah, he mentioned that, didn't he, and said that it's really pushing him on. Yeah, interesting that you'd say that. Sometimes, I guess you just need fresh impetus to get you back hungry and focused. And I mean, to be fair, Dawson is a very enthusiastic young man. Why not live in a dream? Moved over to a new country and having a go at becoming 45. a professional dart player. Ian White ended a little weight for a PDC title when he won in Milton Keynes just a few weeks ago. Hadn't picked up a title in 2017, but he had in the preceding four years. Now Stephen Bunting for a flying start. 120. We're kind of expecting all these to go in because we've had so many huge checkouts already this weekend. Yeah, enormous ones. None better than that 164 from Joe Cullen, though. needed to find a treble there the diamond and he doesn't get it so bunting will have a look at the mensor again didn't miss it by much last time all that time doesn't miss it at all then well we lost six seeds this afternoon but if you were looking at the fixture list before today's play, this is one of the matches that you would have said there was potential, not because 84. Ian White's struggling for form, because he's not, but because Stephen Bunting is soaring right now. Yeah, and uh, as we say, you know, look at his record, he's got seven wins out of 11 games with Ian. Uh, they're usually good games, good competitive ones, and they have played in some of the biggest stages in World Darts as well. They, they met at the Lakeside back in 2010, but they've played but the match play as well, play the European Championship against each other. These are two big names in the world of darts. They've been around for quite a long while now. And they have clashed in some mammoth games. Yeah, a few of the players who were in that tournament 
are here this weekend. Dave Chisholm has been in the final of course that year. Steve West would have been there losing in the first round. That's until this year, that's what Steve West did at World Championship. By his own admission. 60. Not much losing going on for Steve West this weekend. Two wins out of two so far. He'll take on Joe Cullen, who we just saw produce 140. diamond darts in the previous match. And the next match as well is one that you probably would have picked out. In fact, I'm sure James Wade will be favourite with the bookmakers to beat Yella Clarsen. Mm. 125. Just a slip there from Ian White. Even an extra 15 points for a single 20 would have made that checkout a lot easier. Because now he's looking at one treble giving him a dart at bullseye potentially, whereas it would have been one treble to get a dart at a double. Well, it's a good guide if he hits it. Is it Murphy? I think it is. 107. Five. Left the bed open, but Bunting looking to punish. Might only be the ball for him. Better. Double five. 75. Too high. One, White. 25. Gets a reprieve. Nine for double eight. Oh no, he's 17. Double four. Of course it is nowadays, Ian White. It's the Robert Thornton the route. Leg, Ian White. Executed to perfection. Game on. One, one. Well, it worked for him there, but that route does give you a couple of chances of busting your score, doesn't it? I've seen Robert Thornton do both. Well, the treble 17 and the double yes. 17, yeah. Yeah, that is a danger. There is a school of thought in darts. If you're looking to... You've got a simple two-dart checkout, just one big number and then the double. Don't go anywhere, you can bust your score. So, for example, you've got 52, go single 12 for double top rather than single 20 for double 16, because you might accidentally hit the treble you do see players on 25 choosing one or five rather than nine because he can score 27 there. That match that I remember when Robert Thornton hit the double 17 on 25 was a last leg decider and he lost the match because of that. Six. Starting on the 19s because five of them leaves 170. Is he 95? He has. He just squeezed it in there. Well, two trebles for White to leave at a similar finish. Not going to happen. He takes away the need for Stephen Bunting to reel in the big fish right now. One hundred and thirty-four. Sets it up perfectly. Double 18 when he returns. To make it three hole to throw in three legs. And there have been some pretty close encounters. When they met last year, it was 6-4 in the favour of Bunting. When they met in the European Championship, it was 6-5 in Bunting's favour. Yeah, on the third leg. And that's a 14 data for Bunting. Ian to throw first. Game on. He has had a, a couple of quarter-finals this year on the Pro Tour, including on the day that Ian White went on to win, and it was the man that White beat in the final, Dave Chisnell, that did for Stephen Bunting in an absolutely brilliant game, when I'm sure that Chisney around 110. In fact, he ran into Dave Chisnell on consecutive weekends with Chisnell playing around that level. Yes. Six. The White's on 3 2 1 here after six starts. He should have been on after three. One bounce out of the treble 20, but Stephen Bunting does record a maximum. Yeah, that's his first. Just to underline the sort of form Ian White is in, the six players' championship events that we've had over three separate weekends. 
only Gary Anderson, Michael Van Gerwen and Rob Cross are averaging more than Ian White. One and nearly back to back maximums for Stephen Bunting, but he does leave himself a Shanghai finish for potentially a break of throw. And that 60 points on the floor for Ian White has hurt him because he would have been on a finish right now. Had it stuck in the board in the first visit of this leg. It was 100 to 1 to win that Pro Tour title, Ian White. Hey, was he really? really? Stephen Ian White, 120. So I'm told by someone who invested 50p in it. 100. Ian Ian White, 139. That was his eighth PDC title. Can still do this. Oh my. Oh, oh my! Ian White! Diamond stuff! Get Stephen to throw a first. bacon saver for Ian White. Holds his throw with Bunting stranded on 20. 100. Yeah, superbly constructed finish from Ian White. It was superbly executed, but was it the wrong shot? 100. My school of thought that it is that it was, which sounds stupid when he's just hit it. Mm. But Bullseye is a dart, smaller target than treble 14. Treble 14 would have left tops, but he's got Bullseye, knowing he has to hit the little red bit in the middle of the board to get a dart for the leg. And with Bunting sat on a double at the time, it is a, a high-risk strategy. Yeah, it is. And the, the players that do that is because they prefer double 16 to double top. 108! It looked better that way, didn't it? Oh, God, it did. That doesn't look too bad. 180 is exchanged Bunting. by White and Bunting. And you said that this pair produced Brahmas. Turn it into one. It really is, because they could both be left on 81 after nine here. One for White. 81 for Bunting, 1-2-1 one, one for White. Okay, 20 for tops. Game yeah, on the fifth leg. Stephen How about a little 12 data for your viewing pleasure? Well, Stephen Bunting, who averaged over 101 yesterday, he is exceeding that kind of performance today. He's up at over 105. 106, you see there. Bunting's back down. Make no mistake about that. Well, we saw signs of it back in the last year, didn't we? We've seen little flashes at the start of this year. I say I thought it was it was going to happen for him at the UK Open. He might not have a charge there. He's a former semi-finalist at the UK Open, but he ended up. Oh my. Yeah. He ended up Stephen Bunting going down, I think it was to Jermaine Watamina. Yes, it was 10 8 to Jermaine. As White now looks to fire in another. Max. And leaves 81 after 9. Stephen Bunting lost at a Pro Tour final, didn't he, against Mensa Sulevich in Dublin last 81. year? 81. In your boy, 81. That was the first big sign that he was in the mix of winning tournaments again. White has got time on his side here. 41. And he was, I think, still the only man so far who's had the good grace to stay and do the interview, even though he was beaten in the final in a Pro Tour event since. The PDC started streaming them. Yeah, I think he was. Uh, I think he was just so happy to be there because he had really, really struggled for a number of months. One hundred. Wasn't enjoying his darts. One forty. Genuinely thinking about walking away from the game. Now, big moment that. Big big moment. Bunting sat on eighty. Stephen to throw first. Game on. Last start finds the double. 3-3. Three, three. 57. We have two top players and two 
supreme sportsman as well. We know that this match will be played in great spirits as well as great quality. Ian White has gate crashed one of your interviews on a Pro Tour event as well. 100. Yes, he'd uh, just lost to Gary Anderson in a final. He did make a couple of finals last year, despite not picking up a PDC title. First time he not picked up a PDC title in five years, Ian White, 2017. Yeah. This match starts against Rob Cross, I remember, in Milton Keynes. Mm. But he was blown away by Gary Anderson. Yeah, and then started cavorting around in the background while Anderson was being interviewed. Like the gigantic man-child that he is. is. But I don't think I've ever seen Ian White or Stephen Bunting have a crossword with anybody during their entire professional careers. 44. Break chance here now. For Ian 140. White. Ian Uwai, 167. He's got two visits for this. And that dart at double five could turn out to be absolutely massive. Bunting poised to break in the previous leg. Well, he'll come to the ball with one two hit one three five. He's not done it exactly the way he planned, but that'll do. Double 16 left for the diamond. Bunting will be there or thereabouts. 140. Doing everything he can to apply the pressure, including dropping his flight on the floor. And of course, Stephen Bunting apologises. White waits. White hits. And breaks the Bunting Game throw. Eight legs at Ian to throw first. Game on. Well, just the last four legs. Bunting won one with a 12 data. White has won the other three, and every single time, Bunting's been left on 20, 80, 60. He has had to hit these checkouts, Ian White, and he has done so under enormous pressure. He's averaging 100, Bunting's Nine, averaging yeah. 103. Magnificent game of darts between these two, as they always seem to produce. I don't know what it is about. Maybe it's the rhythm, the pace. Maybe it's just a... You know, they, that, that lack of any needle or anything, they're just there to play the game and enjoy it. I don't know, but it, whatever it is, they always seem to produce cracking games, these two. And this is no exception. Well, that point you made at the end, the lack of needle, the lack of any animosity, Six. no rivalry really, that may well be a factor in the quality of matches, because Stephen Bunting against Dave Chisner has a similar effect mm. as we've seen on the Pro Tour this year. I mean, some players seem to like, they, they, you know, Gary Anderson's one, where when he gets in a bit of a mood, he seems to play better. Gerwin Price, Kim Hybrex. 177 from Ian White. Michael Van Gerwen sometimes needs something to focus him. Well, yeah, I mean, we have seen Michael Van Gerwen when he's in... When, he, when he's got a cob on, he sometimes does produce incredible stuff. Seen that on the Euro Tour quite a lot over the last couple of years. Well, this pair are producing incredible stuff in this match. It's been an absolutely brilliant start to this evening session. It's just relentless. 133. Bunting, he's going to have to take this out. But he might with the way he's playing. Treble 17 on ball. Not to be now. Ian Nine White. Double 16. Had no bother with this in the last leg. Three down. No Planted right on the outside Ian wire of that double 24. 16. And Stephen Bunting. With a lucky boy to get a chance here. <laughs> it looked to be getting harder and harder, not unlike Ian White's visit. Looking at the double 16, but whereas White stuck another one just outside, Bunting fertled one into the bottom corner of the double 12. 
Yeah, that's one of the harshest factors in this game, isn't it? You can throw a really good dart and it can make things harder for you. And if you'd run a terrible no, one, you'd have a clear route to the double. Well, both men, four out of ten on the doubles. What identical. Hundred. Ian White averaging just shy of a ton. Stephen Bunting averaging more than 102 and a half. There you go. 100. This is just wonderful. And I'm still no clearer to any idea about who's actually going to emerge victorious. It may well take something like we saw Joe Cullen produce in the previous match to book a place in the final day. Ian White has already had a spectacular finish, a 1-3-9. Coloured in that previous match produced three ton plus checkouts. Yeah, that's wonderful, isn't it? A couple of 17 darters just to ease themselves in. And then everything in five visits apart from that wonderful 12 darter from Bunting. And he took out that checkout of 81 when White was on 121 himself. For a potential 12 data. It's been high class stuff right from the off from these two, and it, they've just maintained it. And they've just exchanged breaks of throw, and there's another chance here for Ian White to bite back against the darts because he's down to a finish first. 100. He might have looked at the bullseye last dart there, it would have got him 100, left him on a two dart shout. Well, that's where Bunting will hope to be. 100. And is. In your wire, 101. So only one dart at double. Possible here for Ian White. Has to find the treble first. He's going to go bull again, isn't he? And this is what he did for that 139 checkout. And you've got to ask the question whether it's the wise shot to do. It worked earlier. It didn't work there. Bull. Oh! How has he found the gap between the bull and the first dart? Well, that would have been salt in the wound of White, who tried to avoid leaving double top. Why? Yeah, in one. Ian to throw first. Game on. Throwing to the match now, then. But to be honest, in this one, who's had the throw first has meant nothing. It might mean something now. Good start from here, Mike. Well, look, look, we've seen all day, all weekend, in fact, players have come from behind when they've really needed to, six. found something special. Stephen Bunting needed to find more than 60, though. Yeah, we've seen runs of three legs, four legs to... Go and win some of the matches this weekend. Bunting needs a couple. Better. And Alan Tabern made an interesting point in his victory speech with Elmar after his win this afternoon. He said, because he's not played very well, and mm. admitted that himself, he said, whoever wins a match where two players play badly gets a chance to play well next mm. time. And it must be a really frustrating feeling to play really well and lose because you're not going back on the stage tomorrow to try and continue that kind of form. Yeah, well, there have been a few players who've been in that position. Bunting needs to find another treble, gets one. Oh, oh, wonderful. 180, number four for Bunting, leads 1-2-1. One, one. One. Is it going to be... 301 in six starts to force a decider. Will he even get six starts? Because White wants treble 17. <laughs> I thought it was going to be rock star. The sequel. 137. Steve Uruguay, 121. Well, it's going to have to be that, isn't it? 301 in six. And it's not going to be. 57. 
Well, the stats say that Ian White takes this out and wins 6-4. And yeah, the stats sure. are right. And look at the Ian celebration White. from Ian White. You do not see that very often from the Diamond. A magnificent game of darts. Stephen Bunting, what an effort. 100 average from him, 100 average from Ian White. But by a narrow, narrow margin, the Diamond emerges victorious. It's his first win against Bunting since they last met on the Euro Tour at the back end of 2015. Huge victory for the Diamond. He'll go through to face Daryl Gurney, the Grand Prix champion. And Gurney, despite seeing off Ryan Meikle this afternoon, well, he had better watch out because it looks like Ian White is on the charge and he's already claimed one PDC title this year. Could a maiden Euro Tour be on the cards for the Diamond? Let's hear from the man. Congratulations. It was a tough match for you. Average over 100. Which is good. It's never easy against Stephen. Um, and it doesn't help, you know, he played last night, so, you know, he's got used to the crowd, he's got used to the stage. And we're coming into it, you know, cold, but, oh, what a game. What a game. Around two weeks ago, you, you, you won your eighth PDC title. After two years, after a break of almost two years, must have felt pretty good. I thought I'd have a rest, you know, and just chill out and let everyone else have it now. But no, my, my game's been there. It's just that, you know, everyone's been playing well against me. So, but last week, oh, two weeks ago, I played well on the, on the floor, you know, and that's what I seem to do. I just need to do it up here. I've had a, you know, a European final, and I want to need to win one of these. And, you know, hopefully this weekend. Perfect weekend for that. Thank you very much. Ian White is here with an Erkältung angereist, but... Der Depp, der von 